Part 5, The Divine Man. In the previous report, we observed the cosmological beliefs seen through the eyes of the classical Greek philosophers who believed that the prime mover of the universe was a divine mind that had a divine plan for existence that human beings were powerless to stop. We also saw how the notion of a divine plan developed, which is an important plank in the platform of the Law of Attraction. The modern form of spiritualism first appears in the writings of an 18th century scientist and mystic, Emanuel Swedenborg, who claimed to possess the ability to communicate with spirits. Swedenborg claimed to be able to converse with angels and spirits while in a conscious state and taught that the spirit, not the body, was what made human beings human. Like Augustine and Aquinas before him, Swedenborg also claimed that the destiny of the universe is part of God's divine plan. To Swedenborg, God is a divine man, an entity of infinite love and wisdom. Swedenborg also taught the doctrine of divine humanity. Humanity, according to Swedenborg, is the recipient of divine love and wisdom due to the fact that man is the image and likeness of God. What is interesting here is that Swedenborg has brought the generally accepted notion of an unknowable, unchanging, and wholly transcendent God into the essence of humanity. The Logos is no longer an outside mediator between God and humanity. Human, God, and Logos are one and the same. During the mid-1800s, political, economic, and spiritual crises swept across Europe and America, causing some people to question their belief systems and turn to alternative spiritualities for relief. Swedenborg's writings and his claims that one could make contact with beings from the spirit world helped pave the way for spiritualism and the French reincarnation-based variant, Spiritism. With the help of a clairvoyant acting as the mediating agent, a person, typically for a fee, could speak with beings from the great beyond. Spiritualism taught that nothing outside the mind or spirit was real, and that the physical and the spiritual exist independently of each other. Alan Kardec collected written spirit communiques from various clairvoyants and published them in a series of very popular spiritist books. Soon, speaking to the spirit world became all the rage in America and Europe throughout the 19th century. Seances, table wrapping, levitation of furniture, and automatic writing were just a few peculiar events associated with the growing public fascination with the occult. The New Thought Movement The Law of Attraction, as it is commonly understood by the New Age Movement, originated within the New Thought Movement, which sprung up in New England during the late 1800s. The leader of the New Thought Movement was the former mesmerist, master clockmaker, and mental healer, Phineas Parkhurst Quimby. Quimby had very little education, but made up for it with a keen eye to detail and a thirst for knowledge. He was fascinated by mechanic science and animal magnetism, which was a term for a mysterious energetic force that was thought to influence beings. He taught that sickness rose from false beliefs and fears, and that there was sufficient power in the mind to heal oneself. Faith in God, who is the only reality in existence, is what heals the being and keeps them healthy. In a letter dated March 1860, Quimby uses the phrase law of attraction in describing the properties of matter and mind, which may be the earliest appearance of this phrase. It was only a small jump to extend that optimistic outlook of health towards wealth. The New Thought Movement held that all is God, and further, since God is divine mind and intelligence, we are all a part of God's mind. Evil exists due to ignorance of God's love and light. Poverty exists for the same reason. Poverty and illness are always due to erroneous thinking, fears, and lack of faith in God. Mary Baker Eddy Mary Baker Eddy was a frail and ailing woman who was cured by Quimby's methods. 
and immediately became a follower and proponent of the mental cure. Eddie became a medium who could speak with her deceased brother, Albert, and began to give lectures on the subject of mind cure before going on to form the Christian Science Church in 1866. After sustaining injuries from a fall, Eddie claimed that God appeared to her in bed and dictated to her the principles of Christian science and miraculously healed her that same evening. The Christian science theology holds a system of belief that God is all, God is good, God is mind, God is everything, and the physical is not real. Of course, mental healing has a long history and is related in the stories of Jesus in the Gospels, where Jesus is recorded healing in 40 separate accounts. One of these appears in the Gospel of Matthew. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. Question. Was Jesus the cause of the leper's cure? Or did the leper cure himself through his faith in Jesus? Next. Blavatsky's secret doctrine 